area of R. So we find area <coughs> in one rectangle at a time. So basically the area was just the function that's on the top, which is the sine function. Subtract the function that's on the bottom. And then you integrate from the start of the region to the end. So you needed to have this written on your paper, this integral. And it had to I equal 4. The way points were awarded on this, let me slide this over. So the points were awarded. You got, you received one point if you have the correct limits of 0 to 2. A second point if the integrand is correct. The integrand is this. So you must have parentheses here to get the point. You must have these parentheses, you must have the dx, and then the result has to be 4. So that's how points were awarded. Please. Um, can we put y1 minus y2 if you like to tell them what they're equal to? What they are? Yeah. Give yourself the pebbles for today, but they don't allow you to use the calculator notation. So you can't use symbols like y1 and y2. So what I, what I would recommend is instead, always put in y1 f of x. Okay. And so, and then as long as you tell the grader that f is equal to choose one, it doesn't really matter. If you always put that in y1, then you'll remember f is in y1. And then put g of x always in y2. That way you'll get the points on the AP test, plus you won't forget where you put them. Two oh, yeah. more pebbles for a good question. Anybody else? Does it matter like if you're on that place and you get back if it's just A or just B? Like, does it matter? Like you wrote, like uh, I'm writing for F that equals that, I wrote just lowercase A equals time. A equals this. Yeah. Um, give it to yourself today, but I'm not sure, that, like, they really want to have, how do I say this? On the AP test, A, B, and C are kind of reserved as constants not function. So I feel a lot safer if you use the output G. Right? Yeah. Two points for work. Anyone else? Anyone have a question about how to do it? Any part of its quality and how to do it? Okay. Um, so I split it up into the point one. So, so how did you split it? Um, so from zero to one I had the <coughs> Oh, so you like found this area first? Yeah, and then you talking, and then added it to the zero minus the x. This one here, yeah, from zero to one. Yeah. So then you found this area because you wrote zero minus, right? Yeah. You talking, and then I did the integrand from one to two of the sine. Did you get a result of four? Yeah. Yeah, as long as you have the integrals properly written, uh, with parentheses where necessary, with the dx, the right limits, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, they would give you full credit for that. Two more for Kate for your question. Anybody else? Next part. Um, okay, I would say part B is a good example. Uh, if you start always ask me, look up, come on, look up. I always say, don't do the problems in order. Work from easy problems to harder problems, and then the inevitable question is, well, how am I supposed to know? Well, the way I would figure it out is I would just start <coughs> reading the problem. So I'd say the horizontal line, y equal negative 2. So I think, okay, y equal negative 2. That's right here. So the horizontal line, y equal negative 2 splits the region R into two parts. I can see that. Right. If you look. This is why it's crucial you don't read a problem and just remember doing problems and do what you remember. You have to do what they tell you to do. Because they're going to ask you to write an integral, but you don't have to do anything with it. An integral expression for the area of the part of R that is below this horizontal line. So 
as I read that, I'm thinking, hey, I know how to do this, so I just go ahead and do it. I don't sit and think about, is it hard, is it easy, I just do the work. <coughs> if I get started on a problem, though, and I start getting stuck, that's when it's time to say, hey, maybe I should go do something else for a minute, and then come back. You don't want to get stuck. Like the worst thing to do on the AP test is just sit there. Like just keep moving, keep reading carefully, finding things you can do. So, um, this one, they said the intersections were. They labeled them as R and S. You can label those however you want. You would have had to have found the right intersections because this was worth uh, one point for the correct limits. And then this integrand the second point, the negative two minus. Any questions, please? Would it matter if you did not put R and S and then put the numbers? Yeah, the numbers are fine. Just make sure there's three decimals. So that's fine. You don't have to say R and S. You do need to make sure you store these before you run them through your calculator, but you can just write them down. Did you ever look at your way to find those points? Because I just put it in as Oh, I got you. Yeah, don't do it that oh. way. You risk making a mistake. Can you plug in a negative two in the graph negative two and then find the intersection? Does that make sense, Laura? Yeah. Two pebbles on the barn as well. Anybody else, please. So I put it in the integrator or the integrand, I put so you have put the uh yeah. back from the previous problem, I put that there. Oh that's fine. But you have to write the effects for B2. Gotcha. Two pebbles for Riley. No. So, everybody, look, come on. Look up. Look up. Okay, for a given FRQ, like, assume this page is this FRQ, because that's how it'll be laid out. Everything on the page is, how should I say, valid for any section of the page. So when you define g of x here, you can use it wherever. Okay. They think of it as really one large problem. Super Anybody else? Cool, next one. Region R is the base of a solid. For this solid, each cross section, I'm going to attention to that, and they're perpendicular to the x-axis, and they're square. So this is one of those volumes where we are stacking squares on top of the region, so it ends up looking like this. Region. We rotate the region. So here's the region. We pick up the paper and we lay it flat. It ends up looking like that. That's the piece of paper laid flat. When you stack on top of that squares, like that. And uh, every square would have a different size because the square has to fit on the region. have more squares if you like. That's how we get a solid. Questions about the idea. So back here, I note that the square, the edge of the square is going to fit like here, or here, or here. So I call that L. I remember that to find the volume of any solid, I'm always integrating the area of a cross section. So this needs to be in your flashcard deck. And I say, okay, the area of this cross section is the area of a square, which would just be L squared. I also have in my flashcard deck that to find the length of a vertical line, I always take Y at the top, subtract Y at the bottom. So that would have been the f of x, subtract the g of x, that's l, so I square that, so to 
find the volume, I'm going to have volume equals this. So that computation right there computes the area of one cross section at whatever x I choose, and then multiply by dx for the thickness of the cross section. I want to do that computation many, many times. I want to start at x equals 0. I want to do it for every x until I get to 2. This will give me the volume. And then the scoring guide was here. <coughs> so I would have gotten this value. Notice they're not individually squared. It's like this, subtract this to get the length of the square, and then that length gets squared as a whole. You can't square them individually. That's totally different. Any questions about how to score it or how to do it? So I didn't know if you were supposed to put units or not, so I just put units afterwards. Uh, no harm for that one. If they don't give you units, you don't have to include them. Can you go back to the one you Say back to that one B. Yeah, I see. 